नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस अ कपल ऑफ वेरिएशन ऑफ ग्रेडियंट डिसेंट अलगोरिदम ग्रेडियंट डिसेंट अलगोरिदम यूजेस ऑल एन ट्रेनिंग एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर द वेट अपडेट स्पेसिफिकली इट परफॉर्म्स द फॉलोइंग कॉम्पिटेशन फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग द पार्शल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ द लॉस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द वेट इट सम्स अप the difference between the predicted value and the actual value multiplied by the feature value and this summation happens over all in training examples and this is one of the most time consuming step in the gradient descent algorithm so we will explore a couple of variations of gradient descent algorithm where we can perform faster weight updates and hence possibly a faster convergence mini batch gradient descent or mbgd is one of the variation and the second variation is stochastic gradient descent or sgd mini batch gradient descent uses k examples which is much lesser than n for weight update in each iteration whereas stochastic gradient descent uses exactly one example for the weight update in each iteration let us study these two variations in a bit more detail as we said the most time consuming step in gradient descent is the gradient computation because it involves summation over all training examples and this summation is carried out for all m plus 1 weight in each iteration mbgd exploits the fact that the training examples are independent and identically distributed hence instead of using all n training example for the weight updates we can use a small set of k examples for the faster updates these k examples will also be drawn from the same distribution as the overall training set and hence we are expected to make a progress in the right direction as far as weight update is concerned so the key idea is to use small batches of examples for calculating the gradient in each iteration for that we first partition the training set into batches of k examples this k is typically much smaller than n in addition we normally use this k as a power of 2 the number that is closer to the power of 2 that helps us to get optimal discrete performance while reading the training set from the disk for each iteration mbgd performs a weight update using this k examples thus it needs total of n by k iterations to process the entire training set one full pass over the training set is called an epoch an epoch has n by k iterations and hence it performs n by k weight updates and you can see that because we are performing n by k weight updates in mbgd obviously our rate of weight update is much faster than the gradient descent algorithm which perform a single weight update by processing the entire training set let's look at the mini batch gradient descent algorithm we first randomly initialize the parameter vector w then we iterate until convergence for every batch of k examples we calculate the gradient of loss function with respect to the weights we set the weights to their new values and then we update the weights simultaneously so you may have noticed that all these steps are exactly same as gradient descent except that each step processes a small number of examples the stochastic gradient descent which is the second variation of gradient descent is exactly like a mini batch gradient descent except that we use k is equal to 1 that means we process one example at a time in it, in each iteration to perform the weight update let's look at the total number of weight updates after processing the full training set once gradient descent performs one eight one one weight update 
MBGD or mini batch gradient descent performs n by k weight updates and SGD performs n weight updates. So remember gradient descent uses the full training set in one iteration. MBGD uses k examples in each iteration whereas SGD uses a single example in each iteration. And that particular, so the number of examples, the number of example affects the number of updates that we can do per one epoch. So let's look at the convergence characteristics of these three variations, the GD itself and then the couple of variations which are MBGD and SGD. So for that, we plot the trajectory of each optimization algorithm in the weight space. So this is a simple uh, visualization where we show the trajectory of the weights. So for this uh, visualization purpose, we again consider a simple model involving a single variable. So we have a linear regression model of the form y is equal to w0 plus w1 x1. It has got exactly a single feature and hence two weights which are w0 and w1. So what you see here is these are runs of a gradient descent algorithm with three different strategies. One is the batch, then mini batch and stochastic gradient descent. And you can see that it, we, we have actually plotted the trajectory of this algorithm that is the weights that they take after every iteration. So you can see that the blue trajectory is what is taken by the batch gradient descent. The green trajectory is what is taken by the mini batch gradient descent and red is the trajectory taken by the stochastic gradient descent. And we have W0 on X axis and W1 on the Y axis which are the weights or the parameters of the model. So you can see that the batch gradient descent has a smoother path to the minima, though it takes a bit of a longer time to reach there. SGD is more erratic in its path than mini batch gradient descent. Why? Can you, can you think about it? Yeah, because SGD computes weight updates based on a single example at a time as against k examples used in mini batch gradient descent and because it performs weight update with a single example, the weight updates are likely to be uh, erratic. So let's compare the trajectories of three different variations uh, with one another. So we can see that all optimizers or all these three variations, they end up in roughly around the same region. They end up uh, around the actual minima. Batch gradient descent ends in the exact minima while the other two ends up around minima. These other two strategies can also reach the minima if we use appropriate learning schedule. So since we were using a simple linear regression model with a single feature, we are able to visualize the trajectories of all the three strategies. However, when we use more number of features, as is the case with real world example, we won't be able to use such a visual diagnostics. So in such cases, as we seen earlier, learning curves are our best friends. Let's try to understand the trajectories of these three variations using learning curves. So here we have learning curves for all the three variations. This is the learning curve for batch gradient descent, the middle one is for mini batch gradient descent and the leftmost one is for the stochastic gradient descent. On x axis we have number of iterations and on y axis we have the loss. So we are plotting the value of the loss after every iteration. Ideally if our algorithm is getting trained properly, the loss is expected to re reduce after every iteration. You can see that batch gradient descent has the smoothest learning curve. 
the loss also re the loss reduces continuously iterations after iterations whereas in other two cases mini batch and stochastic gradient descent there is slight up and down sometimes in the loss you can see that the loss has gone down in general but at times it has also gone up that is not the case with batch gradient descent it has smoothly reduced iteration after the iteration the stochastic gradient descent the loss sometimes reduces sometimes goes up so there is some kind of a bouncing tendency in the in the learning curve of the stochastic gradient descent so as as we uh, observe here these learning curves corresponding to hgd and mbgd they show up and downs in the loss but overall the loss is reducing another important point to observe here is as the batch size increases the resulting learning curves become smoother and smoother you can see that the stoch stochastic gradient descent has a batch size of 1 and that's why we see sometimes reduction in the loss or the other time the loss goes up whereas mini batch gradient descent uses k example which is you know obviously more than the number of examples that we use in hgd and it results in slightly smoother loss uh, than hgd mini batch and then the batch gradient descent uses the entire training set for performing the weight update and has the smoothest uh, as the smoothest learning curve this brings us to the end of discussion about variations of gradient descent algorithm and also the discussion about the optimization component of the linear regression model in the next video we'll study the final component of the linear regression model which is the evaluation